Let's play! Probably to get this weapon over here. So yes, as you can see here, you get items and you use them on the map. Every single one with the exception of new items like the Digging Claws and Ice Arrows, they all relate to where their secrets are in the first Zelda. Now, I don't know where they are, and I definitely use a guide. Now, you can use a compass like they're using there. Compass shows you where to do stuff, but it doesn't tell you what item to use. Um, so yes, you can get them from winning battles. Items, cards will continue to appear as you win more battles, so if there's none there, just do a few battles, uh, usually the quick ones, like the first one that you do, and uh, you'll just, they'll keep spawning. And uh, now with the candle, try searching on the map. So we will do that next time, guys. So yes, try searching with X to uncover a secret. We will do that. Uh, oh god, it won't let me. I'm gonna have to do it right now. Okay. So, uh, just, I'm gonna cut this in. Hi, guys. You just saw me talking from before. This is, uh... This is how you unlock the secret of this level. They're forcing me to do the tutorial. So as you can see here, we have to use the candle on this space right here to unlock the secret for this level, which the reward, which is a, uh, a Nagatama for Impa. So that'll be really cool. I'm actually going to cut this part right here so that I can still have this as a separate video, if you will. Okay, so now that I can properly say hello and everything, welcome back to the Adventure Mode for Hyrule Warriors. We're going to be fighting as a... Th thank you. Uh, we're going to be fighting as a warrior of water. We can only be Impa in this level, which, I mean, hey, that makes sense. Um, basically, this level will be us going around and uh, fighting as a warrior of water, which is what we're going to be. I'm going to see if I can get any more upgrades for her. I still don't feel like I need to get that. Now, these missions here, these fight as a warrior ones, uh, they're not difficult per se, uh, but they're definitely like full-blown levels. You can't just knock it off and be like, oh yeah, it's just gonna be quickie little one. No, this is a full-blown, like, you have to treat it almost as a campaign level. Now, there's actually, uh, we can just get the weapon by getting just a... Just completing this level. We don't have to get an A rank, but it's still nice to get an A rank. Uh, there's also a heart container and a heart piece in this level, which I will be attempting to get. By attempting, I mean, uh, you know, getting. I don't really see how I can't, considering I know exactly where they are. And I'm not going to tell you. You have to watch this video to find out, because I'm that cruel. Also, depending on how long people watch videos, it changes YouTube's algorithms for, like, how, you know, how high your video gets gets uh, viewed and stuff. So the two major keeps you want to focus on, well, there's bomb shoes first off, so you got to worry about those. Um, you want to get Castle Keep, that's where one heart container is, and we want to get the Fairy Base, Fairy Fountain, which is protected by a light barrier, which is, uh, we need to get, then get the Eastfield Keep to get the Fairy Four. So yes, let us fight as a warrior of water, and I go do all this stuff. So I'm just using it as a regular costume because I totally forgot we have an alternate costume for Midna. But you do play as Midna quite a bit, so we'll be showing off her alternate costume much later. Uh, let's actually get that bomb shoe. Because destroyed bases, or destroyed keeps rather, are not fun. Not fun at all. So, I totally forgot to turn off this stuff, but that's okay. Impa, of course, is actually one of the characters that a lot of people love. Uh, not not even just in terms of, of her design, but in terms of gameplay. She represents a, a very fast gameplay style in all of her weapons. Both, both of her weapons, rather. Um, and for sure, you know, uh, one of the better characters. Um, no real flaws. That's the thing. She's just an all-around really good character to play as. If you just need, a, need something done, you just call Impa. She comes up with a smile on her face. She's stern, but friendly, you know. I feel like I'm writing a fanfiction in my mind, which is totally fine, because Impa is awesome. I, like, I've never, in, you know, in any other game before this one, I never cared at all, really, about Impa. But it was this game that really showed me that, like, Impa is, is awesome. In all the Zeldas, really, because she, okay, CDI's notwithstanding with her giant man hands that completely envelop Zelda's head when she pets her. You know what I'm talking about, right? No? Okay. Um, oh, there's a Lizalfos over there. Well, we'll get him in a sec. 
Um, yeah, no, it's like Impa has always been there for helping Zelda, and in every game she's, you know, she's always a helpful character. You kind of just forget about how how helpful she is, you know? And she's the last of a ninja tribe, which is always cool. Ninja clan, here we stand, you know? Um, except she's not really last in a ninja tribe because she somehow keeps having children and there keeps being more Impas, which, you know, makes you wonder, would they still then be the, you know, Sheikah? Because there's no male Sheikahs we ever, we never see a male Sheikah, so obviously there's something with going on does she asexually reproduce I mean that's kind of hot not really um so there's messengers we have to kill messengers suck if they get to their destination they will uh, call for reinforcements which are usually very powerful troops so uh, they're usually don't have much HP uh, they can have a lot of HP but they usually don't because uh, you know Tecmo Koei they have they have a soul they don't you know disobey the rules there are raid captains in our base this is bad as you can see they've only been in here for a little bit and they've already taken a chunk of the health out so you do have to you do have to worry about that uh, Zelda stays in the base there's usually usually some commander in the base that stays there they don't they don't do that much <laughs> they really don't they I mean it's helpful it's better than no one but still it's a uh, hardly something that's that's uh, gonna save you, if you will. You gotta hurry back to the base and protect it yourself. Uh, in the case where there's a lot of, uh, lot of enemies in a base like this, you wanna focus on the commanders, which are the, the bigger Stalfoses and stuff. Um, cause they're the ones that actually control the little troops. The little troops don't do anything. Uh, when you see unit moving appear on the, uh, the screen there, that means that the, uh, raid captains have been summoned, which, uh, suck get rid of them and then put, if it's really close to your base like this go focus on that one because then you can uh stem the tide of battle if you will I'm actually probably gonna go down and get the castle keep after not just for the bonus that's in it but for the uh to make sure that we don't get any more raid captains coming from there uh you know because raid captains have to go through they can't just walk through a base like you can you can just run straight through a base with uh, no no repercussions unless there's a barrier, in which case you take damage that uh, you can't. Oh god, that one's about to fall. We will go up there and save you in just a second. Um, so you, uh, what was I even saying? Yeah, you can run just through bases unless there's barriers, in which case you take damage. Uh, but no, for sure with uh, with uh, the enemies, they can't just run through it. Um, the messengers could, because I think they're meant to be like scouts. Again, you have to sort of think of it in like real life terms. Where it's like, yeah, Scout would be able to just sneak through a base. These are meant to actually be full-blown bases rather than a single room. <laughs> you know, it's, you, have to you have to think of it like that. So let us grab this item. And... You know, I really gotta wonder though, the whole metal breastplate thing seems kind of painful. I mean, mind you, she's wearing a, a bra made of just wraps it's kind of hot but uh yeah Naimpa's awesome I think there if there's one character like because it's interesting though because this Impa is a combination like it's it's when I first saw this Impa I'm like oh it's it's Skyward Sword Impa but now that when, now that I look at it it's pretty clearly not uh you do unlock Skyward Sword Impa colors which is cool Oh, as you see, our our uh, raid troopers are now are now out. Um, you do unlock Skyward Sword colors for her, which look really cool. Uh, she gets tan and blonde hair, and uh, definitely one of my favorite color costumes. Um, a lot of the color costumes, it's like they're they're nice, but they're nothing to write home about. But I know that one definitely, because this design really is just kind of a recolored one of the of the Skyward Sword. With it, with the the color scheme of the more you know, like um, Ocarina of Time, so that's really cool. I'm really glad that that's in. Um, although I guess I'm kind of also sad they did she didn't get a full blown model swap. Uh, though that would definitely be a very nice thing. But uh, eh, what you gonna do? You can only you know hope for so much because you'll never get all the stuff you want in a game. It'll always you know you have to wait for the sequel or whatever else. So we have our raid commanders attacking the raid commanders down there. So I'm actually going to go and uh, 
let's try and get the fairy fountain for now. As you can see, we pretty much are dominating the battle. Um, we don't have much to worry about. So we are in at uh, six minutes though, so we're basically a little under halfway to the time limit. Which, uh, in most missions you don't have to worry about that, especially as you get later on. Um, now you can play these in two player, but here's why I don't recommend that. If, if someone takes damage, doesn't matter who, that works towards your total amount of damage you can, you can take. So, don't just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna bring my little sister in and she can just kill monsters, speaking from experience, because she'll most likely get hit, and it'll most likely be where that'll screw you over from getting the, uh, the low damage run, if you will. Uh, also, for any mission that has enemies spawning a lot and you need to kill a lot of enemies, um, enemies spawns are broken up between the two of you. So that means half them will be near you and half them will be near the other player. So you'll actually be a lot less because of how it's split up, unless you two are constantly side by side. Uh, in which case, it can work pretty decently. There'll still be less than, uh, than in single player because, of course, you know, it has to process two screens at once. But we got the, uh, we got the heart container. We got one entire extra heart. Which is very much, very nice. And, uh, we're not actually at the, uh, the 1,200 yet. We should be soon. I guess, just to be sure, we, I mean, because we have time, we can run up and, uh, kill another base. But, uh, yeah, no. Two-player mode is recommended if the person you're playing with is, is really good along with you. Uh, for sure. Like, uh, when I brought my friend over, we both played, and we both beat some missions and unlocked some stuff. Because since we're both so, so good at it, we are able to, uh, you know, avoid the damage and also... You know, we know if we if we are together for missions that uh, involve killing lots of enemies, and that's helpful. Uh, really, it just comes down to in the end how how you know how much you want to put up with. If you're just playing and not um, not going after those A ranks, which you kind of need to unlock anything, uh, then it's definitely fine to play two player. In fact, it's quite fun. Um, even though the resolution goes down, which I know a lot of people complain about, it's still playable. Like it's you know. It's not gonna, it doesn't ruin the experience. I know a lot of people worry whenever frame rate goes down and, uh, and all that stuff. But this is, this is not Zelda. This is junk food. Which is fine! You know, you, everyone needs just a little junk food in their life occasionally. And, uh, whether that's be, you know, whether that, you know, some people play first person shooters as their way to just ingest something that's not meant to be high art if you will like I wouldn't call this art at all oh god no this is this is junk food you know it's like video are video games art some of them are yes uh, this is not no this is this is just fun this is junk food for the soul which again nothing wrong with um, and as such it's not put together with the best ingredients I mean you know, the frame rate can go down really badly. You know, the resolution at times is absolutely terrible. Uh, there are glitches. I've encountered many. You can glitch into areas. You can just generally break the game. But that's fine. You're just having fun. And that's all that matters in the end, isn't it? Having fun with video games. Um, I know some people disagree. Some people say it's stuff like this that makes it inexcusable because then big game companies get that it's okay to do and I well number one I'd say Tecmo Koei is a pretty big game company working on four or five of these Musou games at the same time but but whatever that's my that's my little rant most of these parts are gonna just be rants and tirades aren't they I mean that's fine but we got a sealed weapon oh it's nice to complete a mission and have it pop up no matter what there is no worrying for me, because I know it's just the battle victory. Uh, not a lot of them are like that. But this new weapon we get is an actual brand new weapon class. One that I think we saw in, uh, in Ganondorf's story. Which was, uh, the Naginata. Which I, I know, I might be mispronouncing. But, uh, I know that p other people mispronounce it way worse. I've heard many, many, many things. And I have no idea how that sword goes in there like that. It is a curved, a curved sheath. And how does it just slide in? 
I mean, mind you, it could just go down and then slide in, but I have no idea. AAA, very nice. We get uh, some some more rupees, total rank A. We get the Guardian Naginata. A Naginata enhanced with fire, handed down the Sheikah tribe for generations. Use the strong attack button, that's the X button for me, to create a wall of flame in front of you that can halt an enemy in its tracks. Uh, the Naginata is similar to the, uh, the giant blade where it's just a good weapon, and we will get some use out of it, possibly coming up. We shall see. Thank you guys for watching, and as you can see, we had, uh, we unlocked a bit more different areas. I think this is because it did the da 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 It's actually uh, counted as a new map, so there'll be, like, these are all the Hyrule Field ones, and then this one is, I'm pretty sure this is the Temple. I think this is the Desert. Like, I think it's meant to look like the area that's around it. And uh, where, the, where the dungeons are, that's where you fight the dungeons and all that jazz. So guys, next time we'll probably be doing a... Uh, Probably this one, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.